Hello and welcome to this podcast brought to you by August Media, a leading independent provider of energy and commodity pricing information. In this episode of Metal Movers, we explore Britain's emerging lithium market. Uh, My name's Thomas Kavanagh, Associate Editor at August Media, and I'm joined by Richard Taylor, Founding Director of Green Lithium. Hi, Richard. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, Tom. Uh, Could you explain, first of all, a, a little bit about how Green Lithium came to be? Absolutely. It started around four years ago um, with the signing of the Paris Agreement and the emerging vision that we were going to have to decarbonise the world. It was really something that while I was working in oil and gas, I'd been thinking about much of the time. Uh, I then worked in Deloitte and thought, you know, there's a time to move now and there's a time to make a real difference in the UK. So really, focused on the battery metals market because we needed batteries to produce the electric vehicles that are going to be one of the main drivers in decarbonizing uh, our current economy. So I went about having a look at whether the UK had any natural resources that we'd previously overlooked in regards to lithium. So I went out, I got my now business partner Guy Hatcher on board, who's got a much better understanding of resource geology in the mineral space compared to my oil and gas space. And we went out and we did several mapping exercises of the UK to, and taking lots of samples of rock to see what the potential was to actually develop a mine from the UK. Now in doing this exercise, we took hundreds of samples of rock and then we shipped them all to Australia. It was actually air freight. Um, you can imagine how much that cost. <laughs> we, um, we got the laboratories over there to have a look at what grades and potential lithium there was. And really, it made us realize that developing a, a mine uh, in the UK uh, from a permitting point of view is going to be uh, tricky. Um, the grades also um, could potentially raise some issues um, and also the volumes in the time frame that we need. We've only got till 2030 to get this low carbon supply chain online to support the battery and EV business. So that's really, we realized if we're going to produce anything from the UK as regard resource, we'd have to send it to China where 100% of the refining capability is to then be sent back to the UK and Europe. So this about three years ago we pivoted the business model entirely and we said we're going to produce a merchant lithium refinery model here in the UK Um, we will import uh, material of high-grade spodumene from already producing mines in Western Australia first of all and then we'll look at other mines as they come to production in Africa and North America The idea is that we want to get high-grade battery-grade material to support a low-carbon battery manufacturing and UK electric vehicle manufacturing facility as quickly as possible in the volumes needed um, of the quality needed. So that's what we're looking uh, to do. We're tackling the security of supply issue. We're tackling the carbon issue of how we decarbonize this. So that's how we came to the business model um, that we are have been running on for the past three years in developing the UK's first low carbon merchant lithium refinery. So your process is sulfate and acid free. Uh, how does that work? So unlike traditional refining methods that happen um, in China, we are looking at a alkali uh, process. This has uh, many benefits in regards to making a greener, less environmentally impactful uh, refining process and lower carbon. So we have picked the UK because its availability to host a low carbon lithium refinery. So we've chosen low carbon technology that produces a inert byproduct, which is and an alcine sand, an aluminium silicate, which we're developing uh, IP with partners now around its reuse potential in the circular economy, which is really interesting and we think can really benefit the UK. The process itself um, is is really um, 
suited to our site and this is the thing with the site in the north of England that we've chosen um, there is an emerging green hydrogen economy so whereas in Asia they might use coal or gas in the calciners we will look to transition to green hydrogen over time so eliminating the carbon footprint of that first stage of the process we are also looking at carbon capture storage within the northeast uh, of England where we are going to be situated and also there's an abundance of renewable energy so we are going to be able to refine lithium with an 80% lower carbon footprint to that currently being given uh, in China. So this is the reason we've picked the UK. The UK is a strategically fantastic place to do this um, and we're confident about our site selection. So you just signed an agreement with Trafigura, one of the biggest commodity trading companies in the world. Um, when's your first output uh, going to come online and, and what's the long-term vision and for scaling up the company? So our strategic relationship with Trafigura, uh, we thought, was uh, essential to take this to the next level. Uh, Green Lithium, are, we've got an excellent team when it comes to delivering large-scale UK-based energy infrastructure. We've, it, it, is a, it is a purely delivery-focused team. We've got expertise that have developed nuclear power stations from within the UK, power stations within the UK, and... Uh, this is a team that's going to deliver. What we, what we haven't got, and we know our own weaknesses, would be the logistics and the supply chain management uh, expertise that a, a globally recognized firm like Trafigura brings to the table. And that's why we think this is a perfect match. Trafigura um, are committed to making an equity investment in our next investment round, and they'll also be uh, supplying 100% of the feed material and also helping us with our marketing um, of our output of our lithium chemicals uh, to our customers. So we think they are really well matched and we're really pleased with how the relationship is going so far and uh, watch this space for further announcements on that front. Um, just in regard to your last bit of the question about output, um, we are targeting uh, a start of production to be 2025. Um, we will start off with, we've got two lines uh, that we're looking to develop, both of 25,000 tonne output of lithium chemicals. Um, we are defining over the next 12 to 18 months in our development phase on what actual proportion of carbonate to hydroxide those lines will produce, because we can produce both. Um, we will look to then ramp up the first line over the first 12 months in 2025 and then ramp up the second line shortly after that. So full production of 50,000 tonnes um, of battery grade lithium chemicals by 2027. Mm. And the products that you output, do you envision them serving just the UK market or would you see a wider market in Europe or potentially even Asia or, or the US? We are focused on producing uh, the lowest carbon, lowest environmental impact battery chemicals to supply a range of markets. It would make sense for us to supply the localised UK markets, um, definitely, but then also Europe. Where we're situated on the northeast coast of England, it means that uh, there are daily shipping routes to the Nordics, to Rotterdam, uh, and to Europe. So there, w there won't be any problem of getting that, what is otherwise quite a difficult um, chemical, lithium hydroxide, to uh, transport. Um, because we're transporting it over such short distances, um, it won't have any opportunity to degrade, um, which is some of the... Um, uh, problems that can come with it if you're trying to transport it very long distances very high insurance um, it degrades when it comes in contact with um, air so it needs to be packaged very uh, uh, specifically and it's a much higher higher value product so uh, that's why having the refinery within Europe is essential to be able to support a localized low carbon secure battery manufacturing and EV manufacturing supply chain. Um, why do you think there aren't any large-scale 
lithium refineries in Europe at the moment? It's an excellent question, um, and one which is really a demonstration of how much this is a new market. This is a new emerging market um, where we have the potential to steer exactly what it looks like. And that's exactly what we're trying to do at Green Lithium by setting the bar higher when it comes to environmental and carbon output. We are saying that this is the new benchmark to which we think the rest of the world should be looking uh, to replicate, being able to feed your byproducts into circular economy, being able to produce a, a low carbon but reliable um, lithium, a set of lithium chemicals from hard rock sources. And what we're looking to do over time is obviously we'll we're looking to uh, get our feed sources from currently producing mines because we can't take on uh, well, we can't take on uh, risk that uh, of developing mines as well. That's one of the other beauty of, of the project. Rather than being our project attached to one mine, we are looking to have variability of where we can get our feed sources from. Um, uh, this, again, m means that the project itself is de-risked um, because we can change to a point, um, the feed sources, and therefore, if there's a problem with mine development at some point, we won't be attached to that. So that's why we act as a nice merchant hub within the UK and Europe. Um, one question about scaling up. Um, with the equipment needed for factories um, and things like that, and global supply chains the way they are, uh, what, what difficulties have you experienced or what are you anticipating being some of the, the issues with, um, with getting the, the plant off the ground? So some of our largest risks are when it comes to the development, um, after obviously um, for any, any refining project, you know, you, in this current market, it's about the feed material and the supply of that spodumene or whatever midstream product you'd take. That at the moment, because um, it takes longer to develop the mines and there's less of that material, that's the current squeeze point. On the actual development side and the construction side, I would say it's um, f there's, a there's a couple of risks. Uh, one is uh, the long lead items. So anything now, um, you know, big vats, autoclaves, calciners, um, you're looking at anywhere between, you know, 18 months uh, and, and, and further for ordering any of these bits of kit. So it's, it's worth noting that there's that. There's also the availability of people that have built this kind of uh, processing uh, thing before outside of China there's not many of those human capital uh, of that human capital about um, so those that have done it are in very high demand also the technology partners um, that you can go to and and ask them to uh, apply their technology to a refining process they are in they're probably booked up now for the next five years. So there are a significant amount of barriers to entry to new projects now. They'll subside over time uh, as the market matures, but it really is showing that the lithium race is well and truly started, um, and there is now a squeeze for resources on all fronts. Um, so those companies that have um, been working uh, on this for the past uh, number of years um, will have uh, the benefits um, uh, over over others on this uh, front um, so that's that's the view on that and uh, want to talk a little bit about the UK and uh, what it is like as a place to, to set up a battery supply chain I mean do you think that the UK has had a sufficient uh, strategy towards batteries since leaving the EU I think it's it's a it's a tall order, um, and I think the guys uh, in the government and in Bayes um, and DIT have 
really pulled out the stops and uh, delivered the UK critical mineral strategy um, earlier this month. Um, this is a really positive step um, towards the UK recognising the challenges um, that are in front of it to develop a secure, low carbon battery manufacturing facility and an EV manufacturing facility. Uh, things like the Automotive Transformation Fund have been excellent. We received a um, grant, uh, grant off uh, the Automotive Transformation Fund 18 months ago. That allowed us to accelerate our work programs um, through the uh, through the scoping phases and the feasibility phases. And so we couldn't be more pleased with how the government has supported um, our project uh, in the midstream. Um, and the future support that they are looking to also provide as well looks very healthy. Um, so, so far, I think from a midstream refining point of view, the, the UK government has been really good. Uh, I think the support that they've been giving to projects, um, for instance, Cornish Lithium, British Lithium down in Cornwall has also been excellent, uh, looking to see if we can actually develop a UK uh, source of lithium chemicals um, you know we really back uh, any other project in the UK that is developing um, parts of the, the lithium and battery supply chain because they all need to come online they all need to work even if they do all work we still have a 50 percent deficit on the amount of lithium that we need to produce in europe and that's so that's talking european wide if, if every project today came online um and and was successful we'd still need 50 percent more so there's a big big hill still to climb um and uh yeah i mean is there anything more that they could be doing right now anything more companies could be doing uh, or entrepreneurs or even the government themselves? I think the government, as I say, are doing, are doing a great job. They can get behind uh, the companies that are currently looking to develop in the UK. As I say, it's going to be hard for new entries into the market right now um, for the next few years because it's a tight market they're constrained on all fronts for all resources um, and this will improve over time um, but it might it might be uh, that we just see how that one goes I think um, but something needs to be done um, and encouraging entrepreneurialism in the area is going to be absolutely fantastic for the future of uh, the UK's green economy. So wherever they can foster that, uh, that'd be great. And obviously, where there are o entrepreneurs can see opportunities in the market, um, they should do so. Mm. Well, thanks, Richard. Um, that was a really interesting interview, and um, I hope that everything goes well with the plant in the future. Thanks very much, Thomas. Uh, if you enjoyed this podcast, please tune in to our other episodes to learn about the metals market. Uh, for more information about the British lithium market, please visit argusmedia.com. <laughs> <laughs>